Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and welcome back to Prehistoric Kingdom with our uh, park that, at episode 3, still has no name. So, uh, we're going to start our educational part of this series because I think it's very important. It's what I founded this park on, and it's one of the things that I strive to do. But first and foremost, I want to let you know that what I was actually building in the last episode was not the Nasuto Ceratops paddock. Uh, I was actually had in my brain the protoceratops, which is significantly smaller. So what you're going to see in this first part is that uh, the nasudoceratops needs a much, much larger paddock. And since we have so much room, I figured we'd give it a massive paddock so we can sport, you know, five, maybe six different nasudoceratops in here and still make this effective. So this first section will be me actually kind of redrawing the boundaries of the paddock and we'll go on from there. Uh, there's a lot that went into this exhibit, so it is a rather extensive build, I should say. And you're gonna be here for just a little while because I don't wanna go too fast. I have an educational segment to do, so I don't wanna speed run through the paddock uh, quite so much. Uh, but also, as I mentioned, I'm not, uh, unfortunately, I don't have the time to build absolutely everything from scratch as much as I want to. Uh, so we're not gonna build everything from scratch, but it'll still work out. And then I am still gonna build the Protoceratops exhibit or paddock as well. We'll get into that in just a little bit. Um, but for now, what you're gonna see here is again, me drawing the boundaries. I have a plan for how we are going to execute this. And my thought is that, yes, we are probably going to do this big, massive rock wall. That's something that I can do. And then we'll do, you know, a speed build of the welcome to the Cretaceous kind of a deal. But I just thought it'd be cool to have the Ceratops, these two smaller species of Ceratopsians right next to each other. It's kind of the first thing that you can do. Again, the idea is that we don't necessarily want to scare the children. We want them to be uh, kind of eased into it, as it were, or something. Or at least have something for the children to enjoy. And I feel like both of these dudes, uh, these sets of Ceratopsians, are going to accomplish that. So along that straightaway, you'll see that there. Alright, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start developing this. We're going to run through an idea um, where I build a lookout spot, because that is kind of a big goal for me, what I want to do. So we're gonna see that happen. And while we do that, I suppose we could go ahead and talk about the Nasuto Ceratops. Now I've never done an educational segment like this, so I don't really know <laughs> exactly how to present all the information in a way that is informative yet fun, but I figured now would be a good time. All right, so the Nasuto Ceratops. Its full name is the Nasuto Ceratops Tatusi, which means a big nose horned face, which is due to the giant nose that was found with its skull. And their two horns are, of course, a sign of their lineage in the Ceratopsians group. So they do belong to the uh, Triceratops, the Protoceratops, uh, the uh, Styracios, I believe, is one of the things that I saw as well. It is a rather large group of, of animals, I guess you could say, of dinosaurs. Mr. Nasudoceratops belongs in the late Cretaceous period at about 75 million-ish years ago uh, during what is known as the Campanian stage. And they are actually a very recent discovery. They were found in 2006. And if my research is correct, they've actually only found one of them. And they found those guys in uh, present day Utah. So in the Southern tip of Utah. Now, we're going to get into why that's important here in a minute and why uh, the area of Utah 75 million years ago in the Campanian stage is going to matter. Now, onto the, the size and portions of these Nasudoceratops. These are rather beefy dinosaurs, and while they didn't reach the size of, you know, the Triceratops, they were by no means a small creature. They reached up to six feet tall. From their giant nose to their tail, they were about 16 feet long, and they weighed an estimated one and a half to two tons. So, uh, and on top of that, they had massive two foot long horns. These guys are still not something to be trifled with, but again, they don't reach the humongousness 
of their Triceratops uh, cousins. Now, the Nasutoceratops, like most members uh, that belong in the family of the Ceratopsians, they prefer a wet and humid climate that housed a very diverse range of plants and animals. The plateaus on which these dinosaurs occurred uh, were actually ancient floodplains surrounded by large channels and wetlands, which include swamplands, lakes, and ponds, which very much represented the southern parts of Utah during this time period. Now, why is that important? Well, it was in the late Campanian stage that North America was actually split in half thanks to a relatively shallow, and by shallow I mean upwards of about 2,500 to 2,600 feet deep, that's considered a shallow sea, but also a very wide sea, upwards of about, I think, a thousand miles wide at its widest. And this is known as the Western Interior Seaway. This sea separated the Laramedia and the Appalachia landmasses. So North America was literally split in half from Canada and the Arctic all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. This would actually set in motion the Rockies with the Laramidia and the Appalachian mountain ranges, respectively. So you got to picture this. You've got an image right here that's showing you basically what it looked like. Now, this so southeastern part of Utah would have been right near this western interior seaway, which then further support that idea of a humid and wet climate and then the swamplands that you're actually seeing me build at this time. So the Nasutoceratops is a very cool little creature. It's going to have that wet, sort of damp, humid uh, swamplands. And that's actually the reason, uh, the, the large inspiration for what I've been building so far that you see. Uh, we have a whole mixture of different types of plants. We have the, I'm trying to represent the swamplands as best as possible by having a lot of water and then those kind of land masses popping up in between. We've got a lot of vegetation. We've got a lot of tree variety. And then what you're actually seeing is that the different substrates, obviously this is one of the better parts that I think prehistoric kingdoms pulls off, is the idea that I can put down leaf matter. So that way under trees, we can have piles of leaves, uh, you know, uh, substrates in the water from all the trees there. But then I got done with most of what I was satisfied with and then realized we had to put a shelter in. I don't know how important that is, to be completely honest, but it's something that is going to go into all of our paddocks. And then, obviously, food feeders, and then we've got uh, the dung beetles, which is PK's way of uh, figuring out the poop mess. And so, what we're going to see here is just uh, a, a basic, right now, setup. Again, I'm still trying to get all the things down. I'm trying not to build things that bore you guys. And I'm trying not to waste too much time uh, on all of these things. So I started trying to build a shelter. I ended up just going with a prefab. And what you're going to see here is that once I get done figuring this out, I'm going to put a prefab and I'm going to change the rock color so it at least matches a little bit. But this is going to be kind of par for the course, I guess you could say, on how I want to figure a lot of this stuff out. You guys get to be here with the guinea pig of me trying to figure out what in the world I'm going to do. But overall, I do believe that this turned out very, very well. So I'm going to shut up for the last few minutes of this paddock build, and I'm just going to let you guys enjoy it. And I will see you once I get what I believe to be sufficiently done. Oh, but also you get to see a cool little part plaza kind of deal uh, surrounding that empty space that you saw before. That's all I'm going to say, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me during this time lapse. And enjoy the rest of it, and I'll see you when I'm done.
and welcome to real time. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed that build. That was a really, really fun build. I had a, a lot of fun figuring out how I was going to accomplish these wetlands. But I mean, look at that. Like that, uh, in my opinion, that looks pretty darn good. Uh, random rocks. I'll figure out where to put rocks in the future. But I just love this idea of all of these little random spots of land popping up. I figured it was the best way to accomplish the swamp land feel combined with all that. There's a lot of vegetation here, but you know what? Uh, as you saw in the time lapse, let's get out of this. Uh, we actually are well within the range of uh, of our forest and water requirements for the space that we have. And now I don't know why I can't name the the enclosure. Maybe like once we officially open or something, uh, it'll work out. Uh, I think I overdid it a little bit with the benches, but you know I'll I'll get this as we go, guys. Like this is all a work in progress for me. But I do enjoy this. I love this prefab. Like big shout out to the designers whoever got all of these prefabs rolling i'm really going to have to figure out how i am going to accomplish uh these time lapses of these big giant modular buildings and it may be that i have to do something like youtube shorts or even just like very short snippets like prehistoric kingdom episode 3.1 where i build an object like these these smaller episodes of just building cool things like this because I feel like that's really important to show off. I don't want to leave that out for you guys, but I still want to figure out a way to show it off to where it's not using up an entire episode, if you know what I mean. Uh, I also really love these. I can't wait to see this at night. In fact, I can control that. I can control that. Like, that just, I'm sorry. Like, the lights just look really, really cool. Uh, I really enjoy how they look. Uh, now, you did just see that these boyos aren't within the power range. Um, and I'm not quite sure where I want to actually put these. Because I don't feel like this is a useful spot. I also don't know that, you know, uh, unlike uh, Planet Zoo, I don't know if PK intends to... Uh, have issues with solar panels. You know what I mean? Like, I know... I know that uh, Planet Zoo does, but I don't know if uh, Prehistoric Kingdom does. But look at that. That's just a really gorgeous layout. I like it. So let me know what you think about that, by the way. I would love to spend some time dedicating miniature videos, uh, in essence, of just building those types of things. But this looks so good, guys. Like, I'm trying not to gloat, but I really do think it looks great. So what we're gonna do is we are actually going to try and see if we can make some money. Um, let's see, a thousand a month. Oh, we have to though. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of where we might have to just kind of hide these guys. I do want to be mindful of everything but it looks like that got it going okay so I, I don't know if we are ready to rumble or not are we ready to go I think we're okay to start you know what we need to do is we need to get some dinos so we're gonna go into uh, I don't need to actually go into the animal nursery from the power perspective uh, we need to open the nursery menu. And here is our Nasudoceratops. Now, what we could do is we could go in and we could spend, I think it's like 600 science points and unlock a couple of skins. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. It's our first dinosaur. It's our very first dinosaur. So we're going to go over to here. The uh, Kyprautus formation. Kyprowitz formation. And we can get a couple of different kinds here. We have the uh, the base, but we could get the mint or we could get the amber. Let's go, ooh, that's a lot more though. Oh no, they're the same. So we have that boy. I almost, I dig the amber, so we have to do that. 
Now, I don't know where it shows our science points. Right there. And so it looks like uh, we do need a little bit of help. Uh, do we not have anything on... Okay, we're not going to worry about that. We'll figure out how to make science points in the future. Uh, but let's go back over to here to our super top secret area. We are going to build... Uh, we're going to drop a significant amount of money on these guys, by the way. Um, oh my goodness, look at that. So these guys are the same. We're going to go with one male, two female. And then we're going to go one male here. And look, those are just... Those are really gorgeous animals. I'm really digging the look of that. Holy cow. Mm, I like it. Okay, uh, so let's hit play. Oh, and it shows them walking. Oh, my word. Okay, and now we need to... Uh, we're going to do this, guys. I really want to get you guys involved in this. So what I'm going to do here is this is modular group 392. This is actually, um, this is so cheesy. We're just going to rename it Havoc's Community. Like, this is the grand entrance. This is the grand entrance. Okay, so we do need some more power. We're going to get into a little bit of a manage, uh, managerial stance today. So let's go here and we are going to kind of we are going to use the wind turbines just to see if that will will help us but look at that oh man i really do i really do enjoy this this is this is fantastic uh the restaurant bronto burger is going to be uh nexus's burgers Uh, Nexus Burgers is what we'll call it because Nexus uh, has been one of the biggest supporters on my streams so I do appreciate it. Uh, Restaurant Tiny's Fast Food. Uh, this is actually going to be... Uh... Oh my goodness gracious, are you kidding me? We're going to go Radis Fast Food. Uh, and then I think uh, for the Giganto Gifts, we're going to go... Uh, we're going to go Chris's Giganto Gifts. Uh, and then I need to find my other YouTube members. I'm not going to do that right at this moment. But basically, if you become a YouTube member or you support me on Patreon or things of that nature, you'll basically get a building named after you or even an animal if we can name animals. I think that'd be a pretty cool way. Um, the autosave function as well is fantastic. Uh, what's our nursery look like? All of them are ready. Select all. We're going to release all seven animals and we are going to officially start our paddock. Suki. We've got Taki. We've got Zinta. We've got Terrence. Hello, Terrence. We've got Arya, Huyana, and Samantha. All right, and we are going to... There we go. Look at these gorgeous, gorgeous animals. My word. Hello, gorgeouses. Now, I will warn you, things like clipping will happen. This is an early access game, and they do kind of have an issue with this. Uh, I know at the moment, so, like, they're going to go through the blood pumpkin. They're probably going to go through each other. They're going to clip through. But my word. I mean, look at that. And we can, of course, pause at any time. One of the things that I love about this game is that at any point... We can screenshot mode. And that gives us a field of view. Which I think is really cool. We can letterbox it. Time scale. We can go fast forward through time. 
Uh, we can affect the time of day, even just the light angle itself. That's a really important one. Uh, fog is not something we can do. Uh, and then for those of you who really need help kind of uh, figuring out things, you know, the, the, uh, the rule of thirds is very much going to apply here, which I think is just fan stinking tastic. All right, let's go find ourselves uh, an animal. I got to figure out my controls. See, see what I mean? It's okay. Um, you come here. Wow. It's okay. Look at the horns on that one. This I know, right? A Pseudoceratops, a Ceratopsian best identified by its large cow-like features. Thanks, this Nigel. Creature weighs approximately one and a half tons. Hey, I was right. To put that into perspective, a mature Spanish fighting bull can weigh up to 0.7 tons. Imagine setting that loose on the streets of Pamplona in Spain. Right. Nigel's going to be joining us every once in a while, and I, I, I am very welcome. Uh, I very much welcome his, his presence because he's going to give us some good things as well. Uh, I need to try and find a cool little screenshot of one of the animals doing something. I mean, that's cool, but it doesn't really show off. The gorgeousness that is this creature uh, we should start bringing in people as well now we are going to essentially hemorrhage money by quite a bit and that's okay but I'm just guys I'm super excited to be here I, I just really am I think it's a, an absolutely phenomenal thing that we get to do uh, are people coming in our park is open. <gasps> and there they are. Hello, people. Now, I'm sure our financial statement is going to be quite atrocious. Um, yeah, our profit this quarter is minus $44,000. But our entry fee is just bonkers. And we get donations as well, which is going to be our primary form. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. It looks like it's already starting to bump up. Uh, I want to get a cool picture over here, and then we'll kind of figure out where we want to go from there. Hello there, gorgeous. Nice shallow seas. We can go look at our dung beetles up close. There you go. Roll out all that poop. Well done. Well done. This sounds super cheesy, but I really like the idea of taking a picture. I rather like that. We got to leave space. This is thumbnail, everybody. Smile for the camera. Oh my word, it's so cool. Uh, how are they doing? Let's take a look at that. How are our animals doing? All right, so welfare is 100%. Health is 100%. They have a great hunger. Now, I did place a couple of fruit trays. We may need to sprinkle trays throughout the entirety. But everything else is looking just absolutely fantastic. Much like a rhino or, well, a cow, its horns are sheathed in keratin. The same material that makes up scales, feathers, fingernails, and even hair. Thanks, Nigel. Thanks a lot. So I assume this is, yeah, they're all very, very hungry. I wonder if they'll naturally find, it looks like, wait, are they actually, he's getting hunger from eating the vegetation within the paddock, isn't he? He is. But Arya, Arya says, hey, I found the fruit, man. I found the stash. And I'm just going to walk through it. Come on, Arya. Come on, Arya. You guys need to eat. Please, Suki. Just eat. I need you to eat, girl. Come on. Arya's boy. What a majestic beast.
There we go. So now you're thirsty. I uh, you've got you've got so much water there. You've got so much water. Are you just going to walk through it too? Let's do this. Let's get our camera settings. We're going to go here. Uh, we're going to change the light angle. Let's go with time of day. Kind of wish those horns weren't there. They're a little bit in the way. Oh my word, I think that's the shot. I think th those were the shots right there. Okay, cool beans. Well, let's get out of this mode. Let's get up into here. Uh, I, it looks like we're doing okay. And once they get their thirst down, uh, I think it'll be good. Their social seems to be great. Their habitat seems to be great. Uh, and then, let's see, habitat needs. We're right in the Goldilocks zone. And there's not even any, uh, very little crowd uh, crowding. So we could probably even afford to put a few more in there once we maybe unlock some new skins, is what I'm thinking. Uh, and it looks like the people, I think they're having a hard time getting through. Uh, you know what? I think they are. <laughs> let's let's try and solve this real quick. Oh, that's funny. I wonder if I they can't get through this. Uh, let's just do this. There we go. Come on. Erase that. Erase that. We may just need to uh, bring this whole thing down. It's going to look goofy, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to remind you that this is early access. Because I think it's an important thing to, uh, to remind everyone. Okay, so it looks like we're actually going to have to destroy this. Okay. Let's uh, push this down a little bit, just a smidgen. And then this is the level that we want everything to be at. I think that works. I think that works for everybody. Uh, we don't need to bury that, please. Here we go. Um, oh my word, e every time it does that autosave, it freaks out on me. Uh, we need to level this out because that is going to be very important. Uh, and then it looks like we are going. I just, I don't know why it won't connect. It's a little bit awkward. It's a lot of bit awkward. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is early access. I do want to, I, I'm going to repeatedly say that throughout our time playing this because it is very important to me that you understand that things will be limited. They, they just will. Now, are they able to get through? There we go. Look at everyone now. Our, our our financials. We are already turning a profit, guys. We are already turning a profit. That's great. Oh, nope, never mind. 
We still should be turning a profit here in just a little bit. Oh yeah, we got tons of people. They're sticking to the pathways too. <clears throat> That's great. That's great. I love it. And we've even got our bathrooms. I'm telling you, I'm going to use this all over the place because I think it's really, really cool. Well, we need to make sure that our dinos are, are actually doing well. They now hunger and they thirst. I think it's going to be important that uh, we lay down several feeders. Just so they can they can not die. And so they can be happy, because I genuinely want them to be happy. That huge head can grow a meter and a half long from tip to tip. That's a third of its body length. That's pretty daggum massive, Nigel. My word. I just I love this dinosaur. I'm glad we picked the Nasudoceratops. Let's go a uh, different light angle, maybe. Let's do a uh, slow time scale. What you gonna do? You gonna do anything fun? Oh, there we go. That's not an angle we've gotten yet. And then we're gonna have to do the same thing. Uh, we're gonna have to do... Draw me like one of your French girls. Oh my word, that was an adorable yawn. All right, I'm in love with this game, everybody. Thank you very much. Just want you to know that. Uh, and then it'll take them a little while to get all the way over here. And in fact, we could probably uh, super fast forward time just to kind of get things going along. Uh, but it does look like we're already profitable. We are very, very profitable. Um, they're all healthy. Great. We now have seven dinosaurs, which is awesome. Uh, and then uh, we are... Oh, wow. Look at the... Look at the science points. We're already at a one star. Oh my word, we could get a Dryosaurus. Don't mind if I do. All three skins, don't mind if I do. We've unlocked a new area here. Oh, we can get the, uh, the, I don't know how to say that. Archaeotrix? Uh, Archaeotrix? We've already unlocked so many places. Here's our protoceratops. We're totally going to get those going along. And we've already used up all of our stuff. But you can see that we're generating a ton of science points. Um, oh, here's our park name. Gotcha. Uh, you know what? Ticket satisfaction... I can't change that. Well, that's unfortunate. This is really cool. This is not anything that I've ever really looked at so far. Cool. It's giving us our uh, temperature for the future. Infrastructure is great. Park beauty is great. Animal diversity is the only thing that's really holding us back. I wish it would give us a, um, a science point generation deal. So I'm not sure why I can't uh, juggle this, but it looks like adults are, are a thousand bucks a piece. I think we're going to be more than okay already. And this is just with one single exhibit, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm not sure how you super fast forward time with a hot key. And we currently don't have staff either. Like I said, this game is going to be 
rather limited in what we are able to do. But I think once they get here, oh, here we go, here we go. Look at you. Look at you, you're just begging to have your picture taken. Trying to figure out the best time of day. Those darn horns, man. They're really kind of a bummer. Oh, there they are. Okay, so we're still hungry and we're still thirsty. Uh, I don't know if maybe they need a certain depth of water. I can't see them needing that. We'll put one like right here, like a really deep piece just to see if that's where they go. If that is where they go, I don't quite understand the logic behind it, but uh, that would still be all right with me. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else that I wanted to accomplish while we were here. And I think now that our park is officially open, I do need, I need a name. I need a name for our park, guys, because that's really important to me. But I still really just love this. I love how well this turned out. And we may, you know what, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and, you know what we did, we unlocked. We'll do that real quick. We're gonna open up our nursery menu. Go ahead and get a couple more females of each. <clears throat> and of course, we can super fast forward time as we do that. Yeah, those look gorgeous. We shouldn't be... Uh, we should actually... Let's cancel... Let's terminate that one. And we'll terminate that one. Uh, we're going to select all. We have six animals. Here we go. They should be okay. The overcrowding shouldn't be an issue. Substance is... No, they're only at 16%. And that's because, look at that, we're at 24,000 meters squared over the 5,000 that is required of us uh, to have those. So yeah, I think we're okay. And look at you. Yeah. I'm digging it. I'm digging it already. Uh, our financials probably took a little bit of a hit. Yep. Just a little bit. Uh, you know, minus 800 grand. No big deal. Uh, that's why we have, uh, you know, six and a half million dollars though. And we're getting more donations. I wonder how we increase our donation. I think we're doing okay overall. Sorry, totally smacked my. And yeah, it looks like that it's 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 our dino variety that's killing us. Uh, so in the next episode, guys, I think we're gonna build up our Nasutoceratops. Uh, not Nasuto, excuse me, our Protoceratops. These guys are tiny. They don't need a whole lot. And in fact, while we're here, we could go ahead and uh, we only need a strength train, a strength of one. So I don't even think they can knock down that, guys. So we can totally just knock them down on this front. And then that will be 
enclosure number two, which is 7,400, and they only need 1,500, so keep that in mind. I don't know why we can't rename the enclosures. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate, and it looks like we might need a couple more uh, poop cleaner uppers. I got to figure out why these guys aren't... Oh, okay, good. Thirst is there. Awesome. They got it done. Well done, guys. Well done. This is May of year four. We've already just now actually started our park. Uh, animal statistics are all there. They're doing fantastic. And I do think that's going to be the end of this episode. Guys, our park has officially started. And it's looking fantastic. Uh, we could go here... Use the day-night cycle. I think what we might end up with... I think I might just stay here and let it go through a full cycle. And then, like, do it in our exhibit as well. Just as a cool little day-night thing so you can kind of see how things look and how things progress. Yeah, I think I will. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I do appreciate it. Uh, if at any point in this video you enjoyed it, of course, give it a thumbs up. Sub to the channel. Turn on bell notifications. Leave your comments and suggestions on all the things. Thank you so very much for watching. This is Havoc, and I'll see you in the next one. are nature's greatest creations. This is your park. This is Prehistoric Kingdom.